At this time, I'll call the April 14th, 2022 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the agenda, we have two items that we're going to add. One is to consider the resolution to declare certain items as surplus. The second item is to consider application for a real property tax relief for a property located 2000 or 203 South Court Street in Enterprise. And I would move we approve the agenda as amended. I'll second that. We have the motion and second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the April 7th meeting. Also payroll of $452,637.42. Abatements of $6,639.59. I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. We have the motion and second for approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go to commission comments. Ron. I did enjoy uh, visiting with the uh, uh, soil conservation folks Monday at a, a meeting with uh, three counties, a workshop that worked out pretty nice and look forward to coming in Friday to ceremony of the robing of a new judge, so. Okay, Craig. Yeah, I remember. Earlier this morning, we did have a department head meeting where we, we did receive updates from the various departments and um, you know, sounds like everything's, um, kind of getting back into an orderly basis as far as the move into the courthouse and all this taking place. And so we're pleased to have that uh, where it's gonna be open to the public, but also um, just being able to, to move in and get settled in. Also earlier today, we did um, go downstairs here at the health department and John Holtgren, um, who had, heads up our EMS, um, they had a presentation on a little bit of what is involved when they do go out on the calls and specifically when it's a, a CPR resuscitation type situation. And we, we certainly applaud the people, the training that they have, uh, the ability they have to deal with something uh, that is a, a medical emergency and um, the response they have, but also the fact that you know they coordinate it with so many people um, the fire departments, uh, law enforcement, and so on. Um, but they do a terrific job, but also the equipment that they have um, is is just amazing. And, um, you know, statistically, uh, when when it is uh, a resuscitation, it's it's not a, a high percentage of, of success, and yet those people are already in a situation where it's so tough that anything they can do helps. And and often they do make a difference. So we appreciate the work they do. Any other comments or questions? We'll go ahead. Uh, we have a, a proclamation and um, but also we do have, uh, before we get to that, um, before we get to that, um, are there any public comments that anyone would have? And we'll first go if there's anyone online that has a comment, and then also we have someone here. We do not have any comments from online, but um, but we have someone here from, Brad, do you wanna do the introduction from? Sure, this is uh, Jess Bastille with uh, KWORK. And Jeff, uh, oh, Jess had asked to uh, speak to you for a few minutes this morning. Okay. Well, I'm just here to present an award. I just want to show this to you. Um, every year, uh, KWORK gives awards out for exceptional loss ratios. Uh, we have three different um, types. And what we do is we do it in tiers, zero to $50,000 in premium, 50 to 100,000, and 100,000 and above. Uh, I think I had 11 plaques to give away this year because uh, a couple of them tied because they had no losses at all. So you guys actually took third place as far as uh, keeping the losses down and keeping uh, um, 
um, keeping your loss ratios down. So I, I want to present this to you. Okay. Um, do you have any questions or any? Thank you a lot. Did you? She's so quick. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions or anything for me? This. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, a, a lot. Of, you know, we, we do come around uh, three times a year to um, the county, and uh, we try to hit the hot spots. Uh, and what we do is we do, do an OSHA inspection, basically for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't force anything, but the Department of Labor can. It's just a, a friendly uh, service that we provide. Work comp by statute has to have a loss prevention uh, specialist, and we have three. Uh, and, and, and we, of course, the 79 counties that we have, we get to them at least three, four times a year and do inspections and just things that we find and uh, point out. And also, uh, keep in mind that uh, um, we have classes online that you can take. Everything's free. Uh, we, we'll do defensive driving for you. Uh, uh, PIT training, which is powered industrial truck. There's also forklift training uh, and flagging training. We can come out and do that. And what we did during COVID, too, something that might, I might add, We'll come out. We want, we like to come out and teach defensive driving, but you can also go online and and take the courses online too. We we have them there, uh, and that's really nice. Like the road and bridge says, uh, we'd like for you to teach us. Well, then they hired a couple new people. Well, instead of gathering, you know, just put the two online, and we also just uh, um, got our defensive driving um, um, in, in Spanish also. So so you can do this too. So. Take advantage of those programs um, because I mean I'm, I've seen it trending, and it since we really implemented this, our losses have gone down, and 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 that just saves money for you know for everybody. K work and K camp both. Um, I was with K camp for 16 years, uh, and I was with EMC Travelers and um, St. Paul for four years before that. So I've been working with counties and cities and entities uh, for 22 years now, and and I I have seen a transition now. Um, so that's good for everybody. And KCAM and KWIC both just try to provide great insurance at, the, at a low cost to the counties. And that's, I mean, KWIC just does Kansas counties, and that's it. So anyway. On this, on this driver's training, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> can we bring our wives in? I don't care who you are. I'm kidding. Well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, really? yeah. I mean, when, when I can teach it, do you? Uh, I mean, I'll teach everybody um, because, and I love defensive driving, I really do. And, and the reason why I do is because you, you can save a little bit of money on your insurance. And you know, you can't measure prevention. You know, you know I wish you could measure prevention, you can't. But you know, just by saying, um, it's, and it's something that, something that it's not job specific. I mean, everybody can use it. Um, I, don't, I think it's a neat tool you can give to your employees, so. So on loss prevention in a 10 year span, for example, how does Dickinson County rate? I'd have to get back to you on that. I could look at the numbers and I'm just that. curious. Yeah, I didn't look at a number, but I, I would say that since we, and you could say risk management is a bit chiro chiropractic, you know? Yeah. You know, in, in, in a sense. Um, but I'd say it's trended down over a whole 50, about 15 to 20%. <coughs> wow. You know, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And I, and I don't know if it's really what we do. I mean, I'm not, I don't know if it's really what we do. I wonder if it's, you know, it just says in the back of the mind, you know, it's like, hey, sure. that K work guy is coming around and that, you know, and, and just uh, safety, you know, and all. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Well, thank you for the recognition and, and, um, you know, it's a good reminder, but I know Brad and department heads and everyone works very diligently for uh, for safety and, um, you know, insurance is something you, everyone has and every entity has and county, um, you hope you don't have to utilize it. And, but even if you have that protection, you still want your people to be safe and you want to be able to take care of your equipment. And I, yeah, I think everything like that is very intentional. So thank you for your assistance thank and you. reminder of that. Have any questions, just give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are at the part for our proclamation, so this perfect timing on your yeah. part. Yeah,
<laughs> oh, well, you know, yeah, awesome. no problem, no problem. I, I mean, we did, we're just right at that point. Um, Wonderful. Would you like to read the proclamation? Yes, I would love to. And Thank if you, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, yes. And um, I see kind of go from there. That's a good okay. place. Okay, Stand great. right there. I see. <laughs> so thank you for having me today. I'm Sheila Beast, and I'm the sexual assault advocate at DVAC. Uh, we serve Dickinson County as one of our 10 counties, and we're so happy and proud to be here and um, support survivors of sexual assault in the community. So it's <coughs> time to be able to read the proclamation, and then I have um, some announcements for activities that I can okay, yes, we can do so, that after thank you, the man, proclamation, you. yes. Thank you. So a proclamation declaring April 2020 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. To the people of Dickinson County, Kansas, greetings. Whereas April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Sexual violence is a widespread, preventable public health problem in Kansas. And whereas sexual violence is any sexual act that is perpetrated against someone's will which includes sexual assault, rape, unwanted touching, threatened sexual violence, exhibitionism, and verbal sexual harassment, and all types of sexual violence involve victims who do not consent, or who are unable to consent, or who refuse to allow the act. And whereas one in three women and nearly one in six men experience some form of sexual violence in their lifetimes, and whereas in 2020, one incident of rape was reported to Kansas law enforcement every seven hours, 40 minutes, and 39 seconds. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, it's like shocking every time I read that thing. Um, whereas these statistics do not represent the true prevalence of sexual violence due to underreporting, and sex offenders often target people they perceive as vulnerable, less powerful, or less credible. Whereas the offender is known to the victim in the vast majority of cases, 80% in Kansas. And whereas the effects of sexual violence may be felt directly after or for many months or years later in confusion, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, helplessness, hopelessness, and self-blame are all common reactions to sexual violence. And whereas the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas, also known as DVAC, provides 24-7, 365 days a year free and confidential services to victims of sexual violence in the county of Dickinson, Kansas. And whereas DVAC advocates are available 24-7 at by calling 785-827-5862 uh, or our toll-free number at 1-800. 874-1499. Now, therefore, the Dickinson County Commissioners hereby proclaim the month of April 22 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and urge citizens to participate in this observance. Thank you. Okay, so do we have a motion to proclaim this 14th day of April 2022? I'll make a motion. To it's the sexual awareness month. We have the motion and the second. Any, uh, we'll go ahead and vote and then we'll have some comments additional from you if you'd like. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So I need to have Ron sign this okay. and then we'll get a copy and get you a copy. Thank you. And yes. Thank you. Would that be our copy then? Or, thank you. or that one I can do. <laughs> and, and then if you would want to make any additional yes, comments, would yes. um, you please well, hear them? As always, we are very happy to come out to businesses, to church groups, to schools, and talk about the services we provide at EVAT, including our sexual assault um, services, which also include our weekly support groups. Um, and we also have child care. And so those are um, Thursday at 5.30 to 7. And we welcome any of our um, survivors to come to that, or even supporters of survivors that want more education. Um, I'm happy to meet with people that are supporters, and we have a huge team that are amazing, so we always have an advocate available to provide support no matter what time of day or night it is. We can attend um, police interviews, we can go to the hospital. If somebody has been victimized and needs a, um, an exam to assess for head-to-toe -to -toe safety, 
um, and evidence of collection if they choose to do so. So um, we do have a speak night coming up at Ad Astra. They're still in the same store at the moment in, Ad, or in Salina. And it's the 22nd at 7 p.m. And we're co-hosting that with CAPS for um, Child, sorry, Child Abuse Prevention Month as well as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And we have survivors and different advocates and people from the community that come and read poetry or perform in whatever way they choose to. So, okay. um, but yeah, if anybody would like for us to come visit, we would be happy to and it's free. And yeah, we appreciate the support. And how long have you been part of DBAC? Oh goodness, it's been eight years now. So okay. I started off um, as the Teen Dating Violence Coordinator for three years. And Abilene actually was my first school, uh, the high school to wow. work with that program. So, um, yeah, yeah. So we have grown and we have a youth advocate who goes out to schools and she's wonderful and she does a safe dates program. And uh, so those are things that we offer. Is this in? We're happy to. <laughs> but now I've been a sexual assault advocate since 2016. So, yes. Well, thank you for your work to raise awareness and reach out where there is a need and where people realize there's help available and oh, yes, um, and, and steps they can take too. So many resources. Mm -hmm. And we also have safe shelter too. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So there is a safe house if someone is in that situation sure that you is. Yes. provide some and now lodging. And house uh, pets too, uh, cats and dogs, and then because that's another reason why a lot of people don't leave because of their pets. Quite understandably, and then we also house male survivors too. So we have a bigger okay. facility with locking doors for each room with keypads, and it's a lot of security, so people feel safe. Okay. Yeah, supported. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. We'll have you sign in too. I sure thing. Yeah, meant to yes. do that earlier. Uh, sure, if you yes. want. <laughs> and I hear you will be back at the next. At the old courthouse next time. Correct. All right. Okay. That's our plan. <laughs> the original. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure you're sitting in it with two? Okay. Then, then we're on. We'll see you. Craig. I'll just put the thing out if that's all right. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you for all the time I've taken up today. So thank you so much. <laughs> that was perfect. Thank you. I mean, I'm giving that to you. So. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm not sure which camera to look at. <laughs> <laughs> now I. Right. Thank you. Let me get a couple. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Take care. <laughs> I'm going to leave some brochures here and at the court. Oh, if anybody yes. would like some now, I can leave some here. If Yes, if you'd um, leave the yes, yes, we have both English and have, Spanish now. So just two or three true. here and, okay. and then um, no, are you stopping by the courthouse or would you like Jeannie thank you. Um, to take some back and take some back? Great. Great. Yes, thank so, you. So yeah, I'll just leave the whole file. Leave all of that. So we have English and then Spanish now. So we're happy to finally have that. So Good thank you. Yeah. Being thank a nonprofit, you. it's been difficult getting those brochures. So oh, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> So this okay, is and we'll keep one copy one for us, video. and that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you did. You had perfect timing. We were just yes, right to the sure. proclamation when you showed up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, report of county officers, Brad. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> last week, uh, I think Craig had received an email from an insurance representative asking about a uh, our holdbacks uh, resolution on on a, uh, a residential fire that they were working and and i just want to report back to you on that uh, resolution 12 5 of 13 which was passed by lynn craig and laverne is our uh, resolution that establishes procedure for fire and casualty insurance proceeds lien the lien fund and just so you're aware uh, what that does is that in uh, forces an insurance company who is paying out more than 75% uh, of the value of a property uh, that has been destroyed to hold back 15% of that uh, and send that to the county treasurer to be held in escrow uh, pending the cleanup of the property. And uh, that has worked well for us a couple of different times, worked extremely well for the city of Chapman back in 2008 on several properties. 
where uh, they weren't worth rebuilding. They were in the floodplain. Property owners just walked away from it. And so that gave that 15% to the city of Chapman to be able to pay for or offset some of the cost of cleaning up that property. And so that's the purpose behind it. If if the property owner doesn't clean up the property and walks away from it, and the, the county has to go in and clean it up and assess it on the taxes of the, of the property or, or you know, whatever the case may be, that gives us a little recourse to have some of that funding back. And so I just wanted to let you know what that was, refresh your memory in case you get the question. I did email that insurance representative. I contacted the, uh, his customer who called me yesterday and uh, was asking questions about that process. I explained it to him. In the same conversation, I also explained to him uh, the possibility of utilizing the tax relief statute that he was not aware of. So I think even though we're holding back 15% of this, his money, the fact that he can get his taxes abated for the year because his house up on 3100 Avenue was a total loss, he was kind of tickled that we were helping him out. And so uh, I told him if he had any questions, give me a call but uh, and send him the forms. But just so you know, we do have that in place and, and that's what it was about. So next week's meeting, as we said, we'll be back at the courthouse. Uh, we should have the uh, the technology ready to go. That's the only thing we're waiting on is for Sherry and her crew to get uh, get that all completed up. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for you to be able to see that. And, and if you want to, from 930, we'll just schedule uh, the work session to walk through and do a tour of the, of the all three floors so you guys could see that and uh, kind of see where we're at on it. And then we'll be ready to meet in the uh, in your new chambers slash garage for that meeting. So uh, you've got the year-to-date budget reports for uh, up to uh, April or uh, March from Janelle. And then uh, she was also able to get the uh, sales tax collections. Sales tax were down a little bit in January, which is normal right after the holidays, but still holding pretty steady up there. So we're pleased to see that. And of course, our special sales tax kind of proportional the same way so Monday Mark and I are going to run up uh, at 1130 meet with the Clay County Commission brief them on the uh, first road bridge we've got the, the re uh, the updated estimates from the engineer on that and uh, explain to them that process and what the estimate is for their 27 percent that's what the the difference is we're 70, 72% or 27%, which is the calculation that statutorily done based on the valuation of our counties so they can know what to plan for as far as cost. And like Martin told us in the work session, we heard last week out at uh, Ellsworth for the K, when KDOT spoke to us, one of the things KDOT is doing now that they haven't done before is extending the window, the uh, construction window for projects, because what they have what they have discovered is that there is a shortage of contractors, surprise, and that they're getting better bids by extending those out so the contractors can have more time. And so, if if we can get it, getting the bids is is important. Getting better bids is even more important. So, I guess we're going to see how that works out for them. A uh, couple of things that uh, are not on your list. We did bid fuel this morning unleaded. I thought it was just notified on my on my email. Robson and uh, Sat Brothers were both tied at 3.26 a gallon, and MKC did not bid. Uh, since Sat Brothers have gotten it the last two times, we gave it to Robson this time. And then uh, last night, late, the governor's office and uh, KEC had put it out. Uh, announced the uh, base grant awards. The base grant is the building a stronger economy. That stands the acronym that we had applied for, as you recall, with the city of Abilene for the Northwest 14th uh, corridor improvements. We were not funded on that. I think there were, what do we say, around 14? 14 uh, awards made uh, from that with that $100 million. And from looking at those 14, they were all in the metropolitan areas. So we, we didn't pull enough political weight, I guess, to be able to participate in that. Mm. But with all grants and all projects, we let them know that we have a need out here and we'll continue to pursue 
the opportunities as they come up. So that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Doug. Uh, yesterday we had the uh, order for the tax sale to be finalized, but unfortunately, Judge Rozier was ill, so I've submitted the order electronically. As soon as he approves that, then uh, we're ready to move forward with uh, the uh, clerk and the sheriff to sign the deeds. And as soon as they have done that, then we'll file the deeds, and uh, that portion of it will be completed. We'll have a follow-up hearing on May 25th. Uh, and make sure that all of the paperwork is completed with that. And there was one parcel of real estate that had a significant sum of money for, uh, uh, in essence, a credit above what what it uh, taxes were past due. People didn't pay it. We sold the real estate, and uh, it brought in about uh, six thousand two hundred dollars was owed on taxes. So uh, come. Um, I, when the judge approves that next stage of it, then we will send notice out to those heirs, whoever they may be, that there's money setting that they're take it from there, and they will be able to recover money from that uh, if if they should be able to. That's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. On notices and communications, we had uh, one that was sent uh, email, and it's from a company that gives assistance for roofing and waterproofing, uh, tuck pointing, resurfacing of courthouse steps, uh, since we've already gone through a lot of that, um, but, but it's a solicitation just that they are available. Uh, if we have any needs on any of our buildings for maintenance, we also have from the county news, uh, their newsletter, and then on the Kansas prosecutor, um, they've sent us, uh, usually on an annual basis, kind of their organizational information uh, for Kansas prosecutors. Were there any other items that anyone received notice on that they would want to bring up? Okay. Uh, we do not. Um, we, we'll go ahead and move on to the other business that was on the agenda, and then we'll pick up the couple of things that we added. Um, we have, first of all, to consider the approval of a bid for Mastic Ceiling of 27 miles of paved roads. And so, Brad, if you'd give us that information and kind of the purpose of the Mastic Ceiling to give us more extension to that. Okay, the Mastic Ceiling this year is going to, as Martin reported to you, I think last week, is going to replace most of our chip ceiling, uh, primarily because of the increased cost uh, of the oils and stuff. So this will extend out, to, uh, we've got five sections of road that he's gonna have the Hall brothers do. Uh, one is Mink Road from I-70 to K-18, 1900 Avenue from uh, Eden Road to Hawk Road, uh, Solomon Road, 1700 Avenue to the uh, Saline County line, which would be just north of Solomon, Rain Road, I-70 to K-18, uh, and then Key Road from 14th Avenue to Highway 4. And so uh, a total of 27 miles. The uh, bid price for that, negotiated price, whatever it is, uh, $544,000, $544,843. And uh, we wanted to get that locked in before the prices go up anymore. And then they also uh, have a little bit to do from last year that they have to complete. And they said they'd come in and get that done first, so. So the roads are currently in a state where by doing this, we extend the the durability of that road. I mean, it's, so it's not compromised enough where we have to get into the sub base or anything like that. Yeah, you know, the asphalt deteriorates from the sun and from weight and use and everything else. And the first deterioration you see is the cracks from the expansion and contraction. Cracks let moisture through. Moisture is the enemy of, of any hard surface road. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to keep those sealed so the moisture will go off the edges of the road instead of down into the base. And so this seals that road. It also has a very fine aggregate mixed in with it that keeps the road from getting slip, slickery. Slippery, in the rain. slippery. Uh, you know, when it's wet. And so it, it gives it a new, almost new appearance. But the whole intent is to seal that road and provide a little bit of a new surface to drive on. And so the Hall brothers have come up with this uh, 
this technique that sprays down the first coat that seals, the second coat is the aggregate mix seal, and it dries very rapidly, uh, and there's no construction needs to go through or anything. And and uh, we were the first ones to try it years ago on a, a test segment on Fair Road, just north of I-70. And actually, it's worked very well. And we're just now getting back to where that section of the road will be redone. And that's been, wow, six, eight, nine years ago? No, I mean, only six. Yeah, I was going to say down the even down the Dillon, we, well, that's one had the shilling dead problem with. So yeah. that's probably been six years ago. And not to harp or anything, but like say you do a new asphalt overlay, it's 10. Yeah. And now say we're, I don't know what Martin is, probably at six down here, but you're going to bring it back up to maybe an eight. And extend it that yeah. many more years out. So, yeah. And, and I remember one of the benefits before too, we really didn't have to close the road for any length of time per se. So is this, a, I mean, there is a little closure while they're working, but this is just a few day process or? Yeah, on per, a per section of road. So they'll, they'll go through and use a flagger and keep you off of the wet section for I think it's two or four hours yeah. and then you and then you can drive on it right away so and it frees up our manpower to do when we're sure to do the other things we need to do yeah. Yeah. already yeah and not not to put you on the spot but just for illustration purposes when when you pave a road per mile do you recall about what that runs or even to asphalt I mean I'm just trying to Think of you know, we we used to say it was over just over a hundred thousand miles a lane mile, a hundred thousand dollars a lane mile. In mile, I imagine it's probably pushing one hundred and fifty now, or more. Yeah, or more. I I couldn't tell you what today's prices are, but I guess uh, it's not cheap. Yeah, and, and the point is, for even though f half a million dollars is a pretty tidy sum of money, considering we get twenty seven miles out of that, that's really. Uh, um, you know, getting a lot of value. Yes. So. And and extending the life of that roadway out tremendously. So. So we'll need a motion then to approve this bid. So moved. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second to approve the bid for the mastic ceiling of 27 miles of paved roads. Uh, Brad, you mentioned the price was five hundred forty-four thousand eight hundred forty-three dollars. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is to review and consider the approval of the 2022 Solid Waste Management Plan. Brad? Uh, this is the annual update of the Solid Waste Plan. Uh, I know Craig and Janelle attended the meeting uh, back on April 1st uh, with the other board members and went through that. Uh, in looking at it, the majority of it is just simple updates, much of which has to do with disposal of construction and demolition materials since we don't have a C and D landfill anymore in the county. But, uh, for the most part, I think it's Craig might be able to tell me, but I think it's just kind of housekeeping. Yeah, so it, it requires all three years signatures and GD to test. Like I said, uh, Kevin from Ham was there, Von Strager, Diane was there from Nathan Township. Oh, right. The first page inside the cover has a sign in sheet, I think, who it was. But. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Paul Freilich wasn't able to be there and stuff, so, but it was a uh, good meeting. It's one of, I think we have to do it over five years. I can't remember now, but I did it last time. Uh, but the biggest thing, is, like Brad said, is the not having a CND landfill, which is, depends on how you look at it. It's, you know, everybody needs one. It's kind of like a, Landfill and a rock quarry, you know, it's nice to have in your backyard where you can get things cheaper, but you know, it's going to create some extra expense for the county. And I know I, I don't know if I mentioned the meeting last time. Um, I don't know if we could work with hands to see if they could take certain things out there to the landfill. Right? I think we, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be everything that went to blitzes. But I know they do it. Kevin said they have a program. That, but it would all, in my opinion, just I can't speak to the commissioner. It would have to be a private. It wouldn't be no city or county. It'd be kind of like this was before. before. And the three. That's all I want to comment on. Okay. 
I'll go ahead and make the motion that we approve the 2022 solid waste management plan. And I'll second that. We have the motion, we have the second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. I will mention just kind of a little bit of carrying on a step further from what Craig had mentioned. Um, the, the city of Abilene does have a recycling center here in Abilene. They utilize, um, last I knew, the OCCK, uh, some individuals from there, and it's a very nice facility, and there are certain things that they do take as far as brush is concerned and limbs on, um, and then they also, you know, have the cans and the cardboard and, and so on. And so, you know, anything that someone would take out there that they can accept, and then they're able to package it and reclaim some of it uh, a little bit financially. Um, but anything anybody can take out there, that saves it from the landfill. And um, so, you know, you know, that long did take that. Say their uh, staffing from OCCK, they just don't have the, the people there. Oh, so that's changed a little bit. Well, I mean, they're, they're able to do it. They, like I said, I can only have one person that's coming over. Mm -hmm. Now, Steph, maybe Steph two or three. Okay. And do, and I don't know, uh, shredder, they're having trouble with their grinder that, you know, recycles it. Oh, the compost the grinder, compost yeah. Deal. And then they also have need for a wood chipper and stuff. And so I don't know if we could, you know, partner with them and see about getting, you know, some kind of grant, something that I know when after the flood in 93, I've been there. I mean, there's been a little bit of a line to get in, and people move quickly and efficiently, and they handle things. But as you weigh in and then empty whatever you have, and then go out, I mean, it's uh, it's utilized, and you know, it's something really. We're fortunate to to have that, um, and if if there's metal materials, there's a certain pile for that. If there's paints, there's a certain area for that. But I mean, they can. Um, you know, a lot of those things, it's it's a proper way of disposing things, so. Okay. <laughs> we did have a couple of items that we added to the agenda. Uh, first one is a resolution, and that's to declare some items surplus. Brad, do you have that list or a summary of the list? Yeah, it's a, it's a resolution that would declare a number of the items surplus that we have determined are no longer needed from the move. Uh, but it includes, uh, we get a number of fi old file cabinets, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some wooden chairs, metal chairs, the old phone system we kept and will be selling, some old wood folding tables. Uh, we are going to go ahead and sell the old uh, generator that came from the courthouse. <coughs> it's a Caterpillar 25KW. Uh, sell it and transfer switch and, and just a bunch of other miscellaneous items. So. Okay. <laughs> and we'll list those on Purple Wave, so. Resolution number on that, is that attached? No. <laughs> okay. So we need a motion. Uh, I'll go ahead and make it to adopt resolution 0414-22 to <laughs> items listed here as surplus. I'll second that. Motion and the second. Any other discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Maybe eventually Brad will go on purple wave. Yeah. <coughs> 
Craig, there's a place for you to sign on the back. Okay. <laughs> Next item we have has to do with the property tax relief. And Brad had mentioned that in his report. It was on 203 South Fourth Street at Enterprise. And um, so that's something we procedurally need to do. I would go ahead and make the most uh, accept this application for real property tax relief 203 South Court Street, Enterprise, Kansas. I'll second. second. We've got the motion and the second. Is there any other discussion on it or question? You might have, Brad, give a summary of what that entails. I was kind of trying to save him since he was coughing, but I, but, but go ahead. If you. Yeah, this is a house that was uh, totally destroyed by fire. And since it was done between January and August, uh, it makes the homeowner eligible for a tax abatement for the property taxes on that parcel. Since they're not going to be able to live in the home, the theory is that they shouldn't be paying any taxes on it. So they have provided the supporting documents to meet the requirements. Okay. Any other question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, We've got a couple things to sign on before you get away and um okay you know as, as always it's it's good news to see our sales tax collections continue that upward trend so everybody enjoys hopefully some good spring weather ahead and uh, the easter weekend we do have uh didn't put on the future meetings but may 2nd is the township meeting that night and the invitations I think went out yesterday to the township board members. And what our plan is, is to uh, do a welcome at the meal and we'll go through And I think two years ago, two years, three years ago, two years ago, we had the service awards because we got a lot of township board members been on there for decades. And so I thought we would go through those quickly and recognize uh, some of those. Uh, spend five minutes talking about what our, what we've done the last two years and what's in store for the next year. Then we'll break up and go to the courthouse and, and give them tours of the tour to the courthouse. They can be the first ones to see it. And then once they're done there, we'll continue. Okay. And I will mention I did uh, stop at Cyril Hall the other day, and um, they're very enthused, excited to everything's been cleared out. They have a few pieces of new equipment out there. They're getting people calling them that want to utilize the facility, and um, it's it's a great facility to have. And encourage people to use it whenever they can. And we'll certainly work with you. And and uh, just need to call out there and find out what their regulations are and their deposit and scheduling and all that. But um, call the Central Kansas Free Fair Board and we're in the process there to help. We're in the process of getting the uh, Civic Center cleaned out and finished up. It's been clean. Uh, I'm having our uh, ICER do the shampoo of the carpets in there and get it all done. And once that's done, we'll uh, return it back to them. So, Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Did I get...